On today's episode, it's the TK7 Go panel. We're looking at saturation and vibrance mask. This is part one of two. Today, I'll be discussing vibrance masks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, yes, we are working with the Vibrance Mask inside of uh, the TK7 Go panel. Now, I recently talked to Tony Kuiper in a Skype call. It was really great talking to Tony. And he was explaining to me about the Vibrance and Saturation Masks, how a lot of times they go go uh, overlooked. Now, what they're all about really is adding really nice color balance to your image. And Tony also recommends that this be done at the end of your image process where you just really want to put the finishing touches on, where you want to really balance out your colors and just bring your edit to completion. Before we get started, I want to uh, turn your attention to Tony's blog post, uh, his latest blog post, and I'll link it in the description below this video. You're going to want to read it. If you're having any kind of an issue with the TK panel uh, due to this newest update or latest update of Photoshop, you're going to want to read through here. I'm not going to go through this now, but Tony explains everything on here, so you probably want to read through this, and I think it'll really help you out and give you some good information and explain some things to you so check that out also uh, please like share and comment I really appreciate when you do that it helps my channel to grow and we get to interact with each other and it also gets the word out about the TK panels and how cool they are and how they can really help you in your Photoshop workflow so I thank you in advance for that I have five different images we'll be looking at today and this shouldn't take too long this is pretty easy to do well let's get started what we're trying to do here is add a color balance to our image. We want to take weaker colors and bring them up and balance the color out or the saturation out in this image. So let's come up here and launch the saturation vibrance mask. Now what you see right now is a saturation mask on a one. And all the lighter uh, values here are the more saturated areas of the image, like the most saturated area of this image are these flowers. And back in the distance, you see more like gray tones. These are less saturated, but they're saturated. But the ones that are super light, like these flowers here, these are the most saturated. Now, we're not going to do saturation masks today. We're going to use vibrance masks to bring weak colors up, okay? So now let's turn our attention to the vibrance mask. Let's click on the one vibrance mask. And now what you're seeing is the light areas are the areas that have the least amount of saturation and the dark areas have the more or the most amount of saturation, if that makes sense. In other words, this is the opposite result of what the saturation mask gave us. So, so things are just flip-flop now. Dark meaning a lot of saturation and light meaning less saturation. By the way, it's important to note right here, whenever you see pure white, that means no saturation. When you see pure black, that means it has the most amount of saturation that could be added to the image. You cannot add any more saturation. In other words, it is maxed out on saturation. So bear that in the back of your mind. I also want to say up front, it takes me a little bit of time to explain these uh, masks to you, but once you understand how they work, they're really quick to make these adjustments. In other words, you can make a vibrance adjustment in like under a minute, I would say about 20 seconds. It's really quick. So we're starting out with this one mask. Now we can go through these different masks and I'll explain these in a second, but let's just use the one mask here and let's put this on a hue saturation layer and let's start increasing our saturation. Now we're not getting a great adjustment here because it's too broad of an adjustment. We're saturating the flowers a lot, which I really don't want to. So basically what we need to do now is find a mask that is more narrow. So this one mask you're generally not going to use because it is really, uh, it's not uh, focused enough. We need to focus that mask more into the weaker saturated colors. And next I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this layer right here. I'm just going to use my TK action. Okay, so now let's go back to the saturation vibrance mask. Now, we start out with a one. Now, watch this histogram over here. Tony taught me this histogram is your friend when you're figuring out which mask to make, and this makes it easy for you. Basically, what you want to do is run through the different masks. Now, we're already on a one, but watch this histogram. Right now, it's shifted to the right. Okay, what we want to do is kind of even out this histogram. So, let's go to a two and watch the histogram start to move to the left. Do you see that? So that's a two, now I'm gonna to go to a three. 
And now it's really full. We have a nice histogram over the entire image. And you can see the mask is changing. And you'll notice that these flowers that were super saturated are now very dark. So now when I add a hue saturation adjustment layer, when I pull up the saturation, these flowers will get less adjustment. And that's what we want when we balance this image out. Now I could try a four and see what happens here. But now I'm really starting to move my histogram way into the left, and that's too much. So this is the way you figure it out. We're going to take a three because we have a nice balanced out histogram here, okay? And we still have modification adjustments here that we can adjust if we need to. I find I don't have to do that too much, but sometimes you do. And what we're going to do is simply output that to a hue saturation layer. And let's do the same thing we did last time. The thicker saturation, start to bump it to the right. But now look how we're bringing up some beautiful color. We're balancing out this image. And I find that a good range is anywhere between 50 and 70. If you go too far, you're going to get weird color here. Like see all that color comes back in there. So you got to be careful. You don't want to go too far. But I find somewhere, again, around 50 to 70. And I'm going to say for this image right around like maybe like, eh, like 57. Let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. But isn't that beautiful? Look at that beautiful color balance we have. I might be a little too strong. I'm going to back it off just a little bit, maybe around a 50. Here's the before and here's the after. Now, I'm going to click this X here and that will shut this mask off. So see what the adjustment looks like without the mask being applied. It looks like that. Really horrible, right? But now when I apply the vibrance mask, the weaker saturated colors get more saturated and the saturated colors get less saturation. Now you might be scratching your head saying, well, hey, why don't you just use a vibrance adjustment in Photoshop? And yes, you can do that. And it gives you some pretty good results. But I will say not quite the results you're going to get with the TK7 Go panel, Vibrance Mask. And so let's go ahead and shut this uh, TK7 layer off. And now I'm going to go ahead and get a straightforward vibrance mask here. And we'll just pull up on the vibrance here. And let's bring some more color into the image. Say somewhere around there. And now let's shut this one off. And now let's turn on the adjustment I made with the TK7 Go panel. I think you'll notice, and I hope you can see, I'm going to let this on here for a second so you can really take notice. Now, this is the TK7, so look at the nice color balance here. And now check it out with the Vibrance Mask. I think you'll see that these saturated colors are oversaturated compared to the, the TK7 Go panel. I think you're going to see these colors are less saturated. There's much more of a balance and a harmony to this image. Try it yourself, but I guarantee you, you will be happy with your results when you compare the vibrance adjustment in Photoshop to the vibrance adjustment you'll get with the TK7 Go panel. So give it a try. And now let's move on to our next images. Now that we know what we're doing, we can do these next ones really quickly. And here's our next image of a hummingbird hawk moth, I believe it is. And anyway, all these uh, images you can download. I have a download link. These are free stock images that you can download and follow along with me. So let's go ahead and saturation vibrance masks. Let's go to number one and watch the histogram as I move through here. There's number two, the histogram sliding over to the left. Here's number three, nice evenness here in the histogram. And now we go to four, it's a little bit too much. So I'm going to go back to the three and let's just output this to a hue saturation layer and let's bump up the saturation and look at that color just come alive. I might not go quite as high this time, maybe around, uh, let's try 48. Here's the before and here's the after. And now just for the fun of it, let's shut off that uh, vibrance mask and you can see what it looks like without training wheels. It's way too much color. We'll turn it back on and look at that beautiful results. And now moving on to our next image, let's go back up and grab another saturation vibrance and we're going to run it through. So watch the histogram as I move across number two, it's moving to the left. Number three, number four. This time a four gets me to the edge, so I'm going to take a four this time, but that's how I determine which one to use. And now let's get a hue saturation here. Now let's start to take this saturation, saturation up, if I could talk, right? So I'm going to bump this up to like around, right around there, I think a 65, somewhere around there. Now this blue area here is a little bit too hot here. 
In the next tutorial, uh, part two of this, I'm going to show you how to take care of oversaturated colors. But for a quick fix right now, let me just use the target adjustment tool. Let me grab some of these blue colors and just ease back on those like that. I can do that. But look at that. Here's the before. Kind of lackluster, not much color in there. Wasn't much color in there to begin with, but there's some greens and we can get some nice vibrant green out of here. And I hope you'll agree that uh, the after looks a lot better than the before. Okay, so again, here's the before and here's the after. And that still might be a little too much. So let's go back to uh, our colors here and go back to master. And let me just pull back a little tiny wee bit. Maybe to around a 60. Okay, before and after. But look how easy that is to do. And now onto our last image. Let's go ahead and come back to the saturation vibrance mask. Now remember, we're in saturation one here. We can kind of read the image and we can see that these uh, lemons and pears, I believe these are lemons, have a lot of saturation and the background colors have a lot less saturation. Now remember, you can always click this toggle right here and see the original image. Yeah, these are lemons and these are pears. So we can see what the original image looks like. So sometimes that's important. You want to really go back and see what that image looks like. But now let's go and find the right vibrance mask. So let's click one. Click two and we'll watch our histogram come over. Let's click three and let's click four. I think four is going to be good here. So let's go ahead and I'll put this to a hue saturation layer. And let's take our saturation and start to bump it up. But look how those colors just really start to come out. Now I can bring this up pretty high. I got it up to, here's a 70 right here. Here's the before and here's the after. But look at the colors we were able to coax out of that. Do you see how cool these uh, saturation vibrant masks really are? Well, there it is. The TK7 Go panel saturation vibrance masks part one of two parts. Today we looked at vibrance masks. On the next uh, TK7 Go panel video, we'll look at saturation masks and how we can work with those. And so you want to stay tuned for that one. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber, click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.